Okay, Gina, we're good. Okay. Well, good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm Gina Uccelli and I'm, the, I'm your superintendent of the Washington Union School District. I'd like to welcome you to our first and hopefully only virtual back to school night. In spite of the challenges we faced with starting the school year in distance learning, and then the added setback of the River and Carmel fires, our classes have gotten off to a great start and it's been great to see your kids on all their Zoom meetings. I wanna thank you all for your support and participation in getting your children back into their familiar routines, somewhat. And I wanna thank all of our district teachers and staff for the incredible amount of work they've all done over the last few months to get us to this day. So over the next 30 minutes or so, you're gonna hear from your school principals and representatives from some of our district programs and organizations. The information they share will help you to know how you can support your child, how you can get involved, and some of the programs that will be available to you during the school year. Above all else, please know we're here for you. And even though distance learning has impacted what we have all come to know as normal, we wanna work with you to ensure that your child continues to receive the rigorous and enriching academic experience that has become the hallmark of this district. So please reach out to us if you have questions or concerns. We'll work with you to make sure those questions are answered, your concerns are addressed, and you and your child have the information and resources you need to have a successful year. Thank you again for joining us tonight. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you the president of the Washington Union School District Board of Trustees, Dr. Kathleen Bozo. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Washington Union School District, I'd like to welcome you to, as Gina said, hopefully our first and last um, virtual back to school night. This is not um, how any of us imagined that the 2020, 2021 school year would go. Um, online learning is not ideal and we'll face challenges as the year unfolds, but our administrators and our teachers are working tirelessly to meet those challenges and to ensure that your children continue to receive the education that you are accustomed to in this district. As parents, we know that at times you and your children are going to feel overwhelmed and isolated, but you are not alone. We are all in this together and we need to lean on each other when these when times get tough. I think one of the main things that I love about this district is the um, feeling and the sense of community and that community will continue even if we can't meet each other in person. So I encourage you to get involved. Later, you're gonna hear from Parents Club and Woof and they are still active and going strong and they'd love your input and they'd love your support at this time. And I think it would be a great way for you to feel like you're still part of something, even though we can't meet in person. Um, as weeks go on, there also will probably be other opportunities to, for you to connect and share with others um, in our community. And I encourage you to do that as well. I'd also like to invite you um, to view our board meetings. Um, this will give you an opportunity to just keep abreast on changes to curriculum, budget, and school openings. Um, our meetings are live streamed. Um, they're at the second Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. You can find the link on the school uh, district website. Um, and if, we also encourage public comments. So if there's something uh, about an ag agenda item or something that isn't even on the agenda that you want to discuss us to know about, um, we will are happy to receive public comment. You can submit it to Mr. Carnazzo by 3 p.m. on that day of the meeting. Um, and we would love to hear from you. So um, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I speak for the board when I say that we look forward to meeting you in person and hopefully it will be sooner rather than later. Uh, on that note, um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the principal of Toro Park School, Ms. Carissa Adiza. Good evening, welcome everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me, for those of you that I have not yet met, my name is Carissa Adeza and I'm the principal of Toro Park School. Thank you for tuning in tonight. The simple act of watching this presentation and your classroom presentation next week shows your child that their education is important to you. Thank you for assisting your child in having four successful school days. Thank you also to those of you that have reached out and asked for help. That's what we're here for. We are four days in and this school year has already proven that it will be one to remember. But our little school community has shown what it's capable of. We are flexible, we are strong, and we are resilient. The very qualities that we try to teach your child in our classroom. 
If you haven't already received it, you will be invited to individual classroom presentations by your child's teacher. There will be two sessions for each class. The first presentation will be at 6 p.m. and the second at 6.30. Transitional Kinder, Kindergarten, and First Grade will be hosting their virtual back to school nights on Tuesday, September 8th. Second and third grades will be hosting their presentations on Wednesday, September 9th. The teachers will be sending you information on how to sign up for your preferred time slot. They are eager to meet you and share their classroom with you. They have worked hard to create a robust and dynamic learning environment for your children. Attendance is an important part of success for students at Toro Park School, whether we are virtually learning or physically coming to campus. The attendance patterns that you start now in the elementary grades lay the foundation of your family's expectation as your child grows in their educational career. Yes, your child can make up the work, but you cannot make up the experience and the dialogue that occurs in the virtual and live classroom. Daily attendance in the virtual environment is being monitored. If your child is going to miss a Zoom or a class meeting, please call the attendance line. In addition to academics at Toro Park School, we value the social emotional well being of all of our students. Katie Lenforth, our school counselor, is available again this year to assist children that may be struggling emotionally. Miss Katie is available and is a great resource that you can contact through Parent Square. My wish for this school year is that as we continue to move forward, we begin remembering the silly moments and the fun times shared with each other, whether on Zoom or in person. I hope that the nervous anticipation of what's next feeling that we started the year with is replaced with excitement and wonder of what's yet to come. Be on the lookout for a Parent Square post with important links and dates to remember and have a wonderful school year. Now I'm going to turn it over to Whitney Brandt, Principal of Washington Union School. Thank you, Carissa. My name is Whitney Brandt and I am very excited to go on this journey with your students. I know as we've said before, we were certainly not anticipating that our exit in March would turn into what we are now experiencing as a school community. But I am so proud to be a part of this district and continue to be a part of this community where we are truly embracing the motto that I have tried to live by for the past few months as we grow with the flow together. I have seen the dedication of our teachers and of our staff and how hard they have worked to start putting in place systems that will provide a robust and rigorous curriculum for your student at Washington Union School. They have built schedules that focus on the 240 minutes of instruction daily that is needed for your student but also are providing lots of opportunities in the afternoons for asynchronous learning to focus on social emotional health, mental health, art, music, reading, physical education. In addition, they are going to use this afternoon asynchronous and synchronous time to pro provide small group and one-on-one -on -one support for your students. I have seen how hard my teachers and your students have been working in the last four days to really make the most of this situation and embrace the place that we find ourselves in. I enjoy the conversations I'm seeing over Zoom already where relationships are being formed in this virtual environment. I am excited to continue to work with my counterparts, Carissa Edeza and Joe Carnazzo, as we build plans for our curriculum and for our community. We are also going to be hosting our back to school nights on Thursday, September 10th for the Washington Union School with two sessions, one at 6 p.m. and one at 6.30 p.m. The communication between staff, students, and parents is going to be key in this environment. And so we encourage you to reach out over Parent Square, phone calls, texts, emails, anything that we can do to support you, we wanna do it and we wanna help you and your child have a very successful school year. And we're looking forward to making the most of it together. I'd now like to turn it over to the principal of San Bonancio, Joe Carnazzo. Thank you, Whitney. Um, hello, San Bonancio and Washington Union community. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe Carnazzo, and this is my fourth year as principal at San Bonancio Middle School. Next week, you'll have a chance to meet the people who dedicate their time far above and beyond what is required of them to educate your children. Last spring and over summer, our teachers have rapidly refined their strategies and approach to ready themselves for the online environment. 
I am confident that they will provide the same rigorous and challenging instruction that San Bonancio is known for. Also this year, we have many new faces on the San Bonancio virtual campus. We have over 40 new students to our district and one new teacher. I would like to say thank you and congratulations to Julie Choppy on her retirement. Mrs. Choppy served 24 years in the district and she will be missed on campus. Ms. Allison Goman will be taking over for Ms. Choppy in our eighth grade position and our new teacher, Ms. Kathleen McCormick, will be filling the sixth grade spot. As many of you know, this year will look very different and that's an understatement. Although this situation is not what we are used to, I am confident that the San Bonancio staff is ready to take on the challenge and provide the best possible distance learning experience for our students. At times, this will be tough. It will be tough for students, parents, and teachers. Last year in the spring, it was recommended that we use a hold harmless grading approach. That view and recommendation have, has changed. We are now work, working on simply extending the requirements of the physical classroom to the online environment. With that comes increased rigor, uh, grades and responsibility from students. I have spoken with many parents and know that some stu students and adults for that matter are really struggling with the isolation that has come along with the pandemic. In a few short minutes, you will hear from Miss Katie, our school counselor. Her role is crucial during this time to support students who may be struggling. I urge you as parents to listen to her ideas and reach, reach out to her if you need any help and support with your family. From a parent perspective, we'll definitely need your support as we navigate this distance learning environment. The teachers will be working hard to make sure that students are educated, but learning from home provides its own set of challenges. A focus for trimester one at home should be time management. Students' days are going to look vastly different than they have in the past. With most classes taking place in the morning and support available in the afternoon, students should take advantage of this support. Use the afternoon time efficiently and most importantly, have time to partake in family and healthy activities. For some, it may be hard to separate home and school. Please set a cutoff time for schoolwork. If you have a child who is burning the candle at both ends to get work done, then contact his or her teacher to determine what potential solutions may be out there. Myself and the San Bonancio staff are here to support you. Please let us know what we can do. As a few reminders moving forward, please check our website as well as our as well as parent square for any updates on friday i'll release the time slots for the sixth seventh and eighth grade back to school nights next week they are going to look a little bit different and the times are going to vary so please stay tuned for that on friday the last thing i have to share is please communicate with our office if you're having any issues with distance learning or technical issues the last thing i want to hear is that a student is struggling and becoming frustrated due to technical issues or worried about missing class due to technical issues contact us and we will do our absolute best to make sure it's taken care of. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce WOOF President, Andrea Massey. Thank you, Joe. Um, my name is Andrea Massey. I'm the current president for Washington Union Educational Foundation. For those of you that are not familiar with our nonprofit organization, WOOF was founded in 1984 with the goal of raising funds to assist Washington Union School District. Over time, the district's needs have evolved. Currently, WOOF raises funds to allow the district to continue operating programs such as art, music, as well as provide needed technology. With the generous help of families, sponsors, grants, and local businesses, Wolf was able to provide the district with a $163,000 grant to fund this school year's art program, a portion of the music program, as well as additional funds that provided much needed Chromebooks for the students. This year, our goal is to raise $125,000, approximately $150 per student. Although the goal is significantly less than previous years, we expect it to be quite challenging. With COVID changing the dynamics of our educating our students in an online classroom and families unable to socialize, our fundraising opportunities will also be hindered. What, with that in mind, we would like to ask that every district family please fund each student in your family. You can do that by visiting woof.ejoinme.org. Your $150 donation can be made in one installment or in monthly installments your donation will be 100% tax deductible. We are unlikely to be able to hold in-person fundraisers, such as our spring gala, which we will, it'll be a big loss for us in our fundraising campaign. We will need to fill this need more than ever now. Families with local businesses, please consider reviewing our advertising opportunities and become a friend of what? 
If you would like to find out more about WOOF or how you can get more involved, please visit the district website under how to get involved. And our meetings are held on the third Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. Currently, we are holding them via Zoom. If you are interested in joining our Zoom meetings, please email me at uh, wolfpresident at gmail.com and I'm happy to send an invite to you. Some of you may be asking why Wolf focuses so much on art and music. <clears throat> and aside from the creativity, art and music enhance critical thinking, language and reading skills, improve academic achievements, as well as a multitude of social skills. Technology is also a necessity in our current climate and the students depend on it now more than ever. Our students deserve the best education that we can provide them. As the dist district receives so little supplemental and concentrated grant funding, it is up to the families of the district to fill the gap. Woof is proud to be a part of the continued education in the Washington Union School District. Please take the time to support your students' education by contributing your $150 donation at woof.ejoinme.org. We can't do it without you and your generous support. Thank you for your time and consideration. And I would like to now present the president of Parents Club, Gina Coyman. Thanks, Andrea. Hello, I'm Gina Coyman, and I'm the incoming 2021 Parents Club president. Parents Club is the district-wide organization made up of parents and teachers whose common goal is to foster community and school spirit. We host family-friendly fundraising events to provide services and financial support to all of our three schools. Parents Club money goes directly back to our three schools. Parents Club funds provide disaster preparedness kits for each class. In the past, our funds have been used to host special assemblies, fund scholarships, purchase equipment like Chromebooks, and install wireless access. Parents Club also gives a monetary donation twice a year to our credentialed teachers. This year's membership is $40. With that $40, you will be emailed a coupon for our limited edition spirit wear and a PDF directory of all of our members. Our meetings are currently scheduled to be via Zoom th the second Thursday of each month at 6 p.m. And we would love for all parents to join in. You can also volunteer by being a Parents Club representative for your child's classroom. And you can volunteer to help us even just two hours makes a huge difference in our schools. This year, some of our community events will be different. And so we're hoping to bring back district dinner nights where we support um, local businesses in the area to have family dinners at home. We'll be trying to get some Zoom game nights and movie nights um, where we can see each other and continue to be a huge part of the community. If you have any questions or are interested in being a part of Parents Club, please email us at wusdparentsclub at gmail.com. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce Barry Capio. Hi, everybody. I'm Barry Capio. I'm the music teacher. Looking forward to another year of uh, teaching music here at Washington Union School District. And um, I've got a lot of new ideas on how to teach and how to, interactive, how to interact musically uh, in this new online environment. So I'm looking forward to trying some of these new ideas. Um, some of you have already probably seen uh, the Parent Square messages I've been sending out, or I've been having some students signing up for the classes, which is exciting. Uh, it's not too late to sign up. Classes aren't gonna start till next week. So if you've seen those messages, go ahead and get signed up. If you have any questions at all, you can email me or even just respond directly to the Parent Square message. All right. I normally take this time to advocate a little bit for music education, as uh, Andrew was already doing a little bit earlier. Thanks for that. Um, and normally I focus on concepts like uh, how music uh, fosters creativity and music students tend to succeed in higher education. Um, but during this time, I thought I'd focus on some of the benefits of learning music that relate to our current situation right now. Uh, one being music can be, learning music can be very relaxing, all right? Uh, learning an instrument can actually be a great way of relieving stress. I know sometimes, you know, I might have a lot of worries in my head and I'll sit down and practice an instrument and within five minutes, all those worries are gone. You know, you get to just focus on what you're doing and it can be very relaxing. Um, another thing is that, you know, learning music helps students learn on how to improve their work. Uh, you know, we learn these instruments, we learn a couple of notes, we learn some melodies, but then we got to ask ourselves, how can we make this better, you know? And I think that's a, an important concept that students can take to all their other subjects, especially during online learning where they're a little more responsible for their work. 
Um, thirdly, I think that music, you know, helps build self-confidence, uh, self-esteem, and helps give students a sense of achievement. And even though we can't be on stage playing together, there's still a lot of achievements we can make learning music online. So uh, really looking forward to continuing with our music. So uh, let's go, everybody get signed up and uh, I'll see you all in music class. Up next, you're gonna hear from our fabulous art teacher, Linda Jang. Linda, you gotta unmute, unmute Linda, unmute. Okay, here I go again. I'm so happy to, happy to be virtually meeting with you all tonight. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Linda Jang and I'm the art docent coordinator and oversee the whole the art docent program at all three schools. So I oversee Toro Park, Washington and um, San Bonancho. The art docent program has a rich history of providing hands-on and art history lessons to all our students over the past 30 years. Um, we are fortunate to continue this outstanding program through the dedicated and hard work of our Washington Union Educational Foundation, or as we know it, call it WOOF. Their yearly fundraising makes art and music possible to continue to enrich our students' education. Though for now, we're not able to attend class in person, our art program will continue to provide your children with picture the month lessons and hands-on lessons. We also still plan to have a, a district art day. Um, in a few weeks, um, I'll be rolling out my Bitmoji classroom for picture of the month. I'm pretty excited about it. And um, uh, after that, we'll be starting doing some hands-on lessons. Uh, finally, last year, our art docent program ended with a virtual art show. Each student was able to show and share one of their art pieces that they worked on last year. Um, as this school year progresses, I'd like to ask one favor of every parent to please save your, your child or children's artwork that they create this year. Um, I still plan to have an, an annual art show next May again. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, you can email me at ljang at washingtonusd.org. And I just wanna thank you for your continued support for the Art Docent Program. Um, I think what Barry said, I hadn't planned on saying this, but I agree. Um, art and music is very important during this particular time. Um, I think it's a great way not only to relax and to do something a little bit different, but I am finding that parents are also enjoying the art lessons and art history lessons that um, are being provided. Um, last year in spring, I had several um, parents send me their artwork that they had done along with their child. And I think it's a great way of doing something together as a family. So now I would like to introduce Ms. Katie, our school counselor, our fabulous school counselor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. As you guys, I, hi, I'm Katie. I'm your school counselor. Um, I am the school counselor for the entire district, so I get to work at all three sites. And as you've heard from the other speakers, I work with an amazing team of administrators and teachers, students, and parents who all collaborate together to make Washington Union School District the amazing place that it is to learn and grow. I'm, uh, I consider it a sincere privilege to be able to help support uh, your learners and you as we go through this journey, as it has already been echoed. This is a situation that none of us would have hoped for, um, but I'm proud to say that we are making the most of it and working together as a community to help support and make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and that we're taking care of others. Uh, so I've communicated with most of you via Parent Square already to share some resources and my contact information and encourage you to reach out and ask for help or support or ideas if there's anything that, that I can do or um, my amazing team can do to help support you during this time of remote learning. Uh, we're gonna get through this one day at a time and there's a lot of great resources and support out there for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I will be also working with all of our students uh, in their virtual classrooms with doing social emotional curriculum and teaching skills and strategies that all of our students can use to gain better self-awareness and tools for self-regulation, um, dealing with some different big feelings that they might be having while they're at home. So uh, look forward to that. Hopefully I'll, I'll send out that information and your student can share with you some of the things that they've learned. As adults, we're aware that this is a tough situation. We have the language and the awareness to communicate how we might be feeling and 
keep in mind that some of our, our young learners might not have those skills or awareness yet, and it might be coming out in um, different behaviors that are unusual for your child. So, you know, reach out if there's anything that, that we can do to help. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce Michael Green, who is the Math Counts Coordinator. Michael, you need to unmute. Unmute, Michael. There we go. Am I through now? Good, thank you. I'm Michael Green. I'm the uh, co-founder of the Math Counts program at San Bonancio. Together with Pam Durkee in 1997, we started this program at San Bonancio. It's a national program started by the Society of Professional Engineers in 1985. What it is, is an enrichment program in mathematics. It, it um, is designed to challenge children to learn how to think and how to problem solve. And we engage the children over the span of three years, starting with sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. They all work together in the same room and they learn from each other. The reason that we do this is, or my personal motivation stems from a study that I saw in 1990, it was published in 1986 in Science Magazine. And what it was, was it was comparing mathematics performance uh, across three cohorts of students. So the cohorts were chosen from upper middle class school districts. One came out of Minnesota, one came out of Japan, and the third cohort came out of Taiwan. And what they did was they gave the kids the same tests uh, adjusted for language. And they saw that the first graders, the three populations of, of first graders were very evenly matched. The, in fact, the American kids came out a little bit ahead. They were able to read uh, uh, just a little bit more advanced than the uh, Asian children were. But by fourth grade, uh, the populations had begun to diverge and uh, the Japanese were moving out ahead, Taiwanese were in the middle, and the Americans were bringing up the tail. By eighth grade, the Japanese had moved so far ahead that the very uh, worst performing Japanese student outperformed the very best American student. And the reason for the complete lack of overlap between the two populations came down to a couple of factors, that, but the key factor was that the Japanese kids were going to school for 240 days a year uh, versus 180 for the American kids. So by three years, the Japanese kids had had a full school year, uh, full uh, years worth of extra education. And then by eighth grade, they were two and a third year ahead of the, um, two and two thirds years ahead of the American kids. So clearly you wouldn't expect 10th graders uh, to be out them by eighth graders. The math program that we provide gives your child an opportunity to practice math because at the end of the day, the way to get good at math is to practice math. There is no math gene, there is no natural affinity for it. It's just something that's developed and it takes time, lots of time. So uh, we will be meeting via Zoom this school year. Uh, it's going to be a new kind of program for us. And uh, we uh, will be meeting with the uh, returning students three times a week and the new students uh, two times a week. And hopefully this works out for us. Uh, this is an experiment for everybody. We're sort of building the airplane as we go along this year. And uh, we hope that if you're interested in, in providing the opportunity for your child to excel in mathematics, that uh, you have your child join the program. There will be information posted at Greens, G R E E N E S dot com, uh, starting tomorrow as to how to sign up. And there will be a meeting, there will be information about the meeting at greens dot com. And I hope to see you there. Thank you. And I don't know who takes up after me. <laughs> I'll go ahead and finish up. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Thank you, Gina. Bye bye. So uh, just to wrap up very quickly, I want to I want to thank you all for being here tonight. I did want to introduce two of our board members that have joined us here tonight. Uh, first, Sarah Young and Kathy Lagranger. Um, John Warwick and Hope Tinney were unable to join us, but 
Um, I want to, those are, we have three of our board members with us tonight. We have a phenomenal board. And as Kathy said, we hope you'll join us at our monthly board meetings. Um, as you heard tonight, um, we have a phenomenal district made of professionals that have dedicated themselves and their careers to the success of the kids that they serve and the communities that they serve. And as you see so often, the strength of a community is exhibited uh, not just in how they behave when times are good, but in times of crisis. And I am so, so proud of this community and how we have responded uh, over the last seven or eight months with COVID and with the wildfires and, and still being able to start this school year and the success that we've had in, in opening uh, up this new school year in this environment. Um, so for parents, um, I really would encourage you to be involved and to find out more about your parent organizations, Parents Club and Woof. Um, they do an amazing job of providing support to the district. And I hope that you will get involved and support those organizations so that we can continue to do the amazing things in this district that we've been able to do. And we cannot do that without their support. So I hope you'll continue to participate and get involved uh, to the principals. Thank you for all of your service and for doing what you do to make your schools the special places that they are. Barry and Linda keep doing a fantastic job with the arts. We need that more than ever. Katie, you do a phenomenal job of supporting our kids. So thank you all. Uh, have a good evening. We look forward to seeing you next week at your school, back to school nights. Um, and have a great year. Thanks very much, everyone.